Hello, welcome to the channel. In this video, we're going to be taking out this old Worcester four pipe boiler and replacing it with a Wiesman. It's minus six outside and a customer has kindly let me plug in my little Dyson heater so I don't freeze to death in this garage. Now, when I first come to quote this job, I actually thought it was a combi boiler installation. All the pipe work's been done really nicely by the previous engineer and it all lines up like your typical combi boiler. But on further inspection, I actually found out that this is a four pipe Worcester boiler. Now, in my 20 years of being a plumbing and heating engineer, I've never actually come across this particular boiler. So I was quite surprised to find a boiler that I've never seen before. Now, a four pipe system is basically a boiler that has two flow and returns. So you'll have a flow and return that goes up to the hot water cylinder that does the coil independently. And then you have a flow and return that goes to your radiators. Rather than using the diverter valve externally from the boiler, there's a diverter valve inside the boiler itself. So there really is only one or two brands that do four pipe systems. And the one we're going to be installing today is the Wiesman. Now, obviously I'm a Wiesman installer, so I'm used to putting in these four pipe systems. So it should be pretty straightforward. But like I said, haven't seen one of these before. Pretty interesting to me. A um, couple of issues that we're going to come across is the hot water cylinder is the other side of the house. So what we're going to have to do is use the existing 10k ohm sensor to measure the domestic hot water temperature inside the cylinder. So hopefully that's all going to be okay. The customer has been having issues with the hot water, so hopefully it's not the sensor that's broken. Otherwise, it's going to be quite difficult to run a new one. So anyway, let's get this drain down and get this boiler off the wall. That is the main body of the boiler off the wall and I've just got to remove this pipe work from the jig. So Worcester boilers always come with a mountain jig. Now, some engineers like this, it means you can kind of pre-pipe the uh, jig or the frame before you actually mount the boiler. But to be honest, I just find it a bit of a pain in the ass, especially when removing these boilers off the wall. It's always a little bit difficult disconnecting all these isolation valves along here. I just think it's a bit unnecessary to be honest, but I'm not a Worcester fan, so there we go. Right. Um, now what we've got to do really is just identify all the pipe work so it's very very similar to a standard system boiler so we've got our flow pipes on the left so we've got our central heating flow and then our flow to our um, cylinder coil our gas and then we've got our return from our cylinder coil and then our return for our central heating so you can see why it's quite easy to get this mixed up with a combi boiler now this was installed by British Gas. Like I said, the pipe works actually really good, but um, the servicing on it has been pretty poor. As I've been stripping it down, just to make it lighter for me to lift, I can see it's not really ever been properly serviced before. And the flue was nice and easy. It was just a bit of insulation shoved in there. So, so far so good getting it removed. Let's get this jig off. Let's get the Wiesman on the wall. I'm just unpackaging the new boiler and on this Wiesman 100 I've noticed that they've actually added this cushion on the back so the way this kind of sits on the bracket it's almost like sits off the wall slightly because you've got these little black feet on the bottom and that kind of keeps it about 5-10 mil off the wall but they've actually added this cushion on the back now so interested to see if they've changed anything else on this design I guess that's just to prevent sort of any vibration going back into the wall so yeah nice to see that moving on to the flue then so i've just got that cart and just placed it in now i just wanted to let you know that the white part of these Wiesman flues you can actually have them showing externally so if you needed to run this flue through a semi-enclosed structure something like that something where the actual flue pipe is going to be external you can actually do that but obviously because this is just a horizontal flue we're just going to try and make it look as neat as we possibly can and have no white part of that flue showing Moving inside then and looking at the flue installation, I just wanted to let you know that you can't actually screw into a Wiesman flue. There is a little hole here that looks like you could potentially put a little self-tapper in, but I'm 99% sure that little hole is just a viewing window for the flue here. So when you're actually pushing in a horizontal flue, it will actually push past that little hole so you can see it's fully home. Now, what I will say is it barely goes past that tiny little hole there. So sometimes when you're Sort of moving it around it will slip out quite easily so as long as you can see the white part of the flue then you should be totally fine but that is it there's no like securing bracket or anything like that like any of the other boiler brands i'm not sure if that's a positive or a negative to be honest i think as long as you're sealing up the flue hole properly then obviously it's fine but if you install this flue without sealing up this hole then this has potential to move now this hole is actually huge because it looks like they might have 
called the hole in the wrong place the first time so I've got like a big void I need to fill up so yeah just be aware of that it just pushes in no screws right we've got a new boiler on the wall I just need to cut back this existing pipe work and then we can begin to plumb in a new boiler now I just want to run through with you some of the advantages of having a four pipe system boiler now the main difference between this and a standard system boiler is it can do domestic hot water priority so it can recharge or reheat your domestic hot water cylinder as fast as possible it uses a 10k ohm sensor to measure the domestic hot water temperature that sends a signal back to the boiler and then whenever that needs to actually reheat heat or recharge it will actually turn the heating off concentrate heating up the hot water and it will reheat it as fast as it possibly can now that's good because it can tell the difference between whether we're heating up the radiators or your heating or your domestic hot water now that means we can actually set the boiler at two different flow temperatures so for domestic hot water priority it normally runs at full rate so just go into max mode to reheat as fast as it can but with heating or radiators underfloor heating whichever it is you've got this connected to you can actually change your maximum flow temperature now that's good because you don't necessarily need your boilers to be running at full rate whilst it's heating up your radiators most radiators in the uk are oversized and any new installation the maximum you should be designing your flow rate at is about 55 degrees so what that does is it means we can drop the flow temperature for essential heating without leaving our hot water cylinder cold so for example on this one i'm going to leave that set at 55 degrees and then the heating will uh, sorry the hot water will be at full rate so the reason that is good is because it's going to be more efficient and the house should hopefully still heat up if we find that the radiators are undersized we might have to turn that flow temperature up but the chances are the rads are going to be oversized and we can actually drop that temperature down so we'll start off at 55 degrees and if the house is still getting nice and hot the lower we bring that um, heating flow temperature down the more efficient this boiler is going to be so let's get this piped up no pressure but it's snowing now <laughs> As if by magic, I've now piped up the boiler and we are operational. So I must admit it was a little bit more awkward than I was expecting, mainly because I think when they piped this up originally, they didn't really think of the boiler layout, so the pipe work going into the actual boiler itself. So they're not actually in the correct layout to sort of swing in nice and neatly. So um, other than that, it was okay. So I did use press on this one. The reason for that is Viesman don't actually give you the brass fittings or brass valves to go onto the flow and return for the hot water cylinder coil. Now, if you was using this as a standard system boiler, you would actually have to buy some three quarter female caps to go onto those male threads. And I think that's just a bit annoying. I think Viesman really needs to sort that out. They need to give you the correct valves. Basically, they will sell them to you, but obviously at the inflated price. So what I've done is I've ordered these from Lawton. They are three quarter flat face compression fittings they come with a washer and then you can see here this is actually a press fit connection so we've got press uh, to three quarter female and they work really well so highly recommend getting some of them and if you're thinking about doing this four pipe setup this boiler won't actually come with those brass connections now the other thing it doesn't come with is the 10k ohm sensor so that's the domestic hot water sensor that you will need to actually uh, measure the hot water temperature and what happens is you just wire that back into the boiler which I'll show you in a minute where that connection is now on this uh, job this already had a 10k ohm sensor running all the way through the house and I have just connected that up and it does seem to be working all right so that is excellent news now I've gone for the Addy Magna Clean I would say in my opinion this is still the best filter uh, on the market I know you can get brass ones but I just think the uh, Addy Professional 2 is the best at collecting any sludge and debris no i'm not sponsored by them or anything like that i just genuinely believe they are still the best filter out there now a couple of things that people um either love or hate with these boilers so you've got this flexible hose here now that is your combined condense and prv hose now it's incredibly long and it is quite awkward to get that plumbed in if you're in a for example a cupboard or somewhere where it's quite tight it's not so bad in here because i've got quite a lot of room i'm just in a garage but it's quite awkward to kind of hide so what i've done is i've just clipped it down the wall to the side there and we've just got plumbed it in and it just so happens to be a basin waste right behind me where i'm standing so we've just gone straight into that which makes that quite easy 
Now, what I'll do is we'll open up the boiler. I'll show you where this domestic hot water sensor is and uh, yeah, show you how to wire it in. Inside the Wiesmann boiler then, we've got Wiesmann stainless steel heat exchanger, everything else you'd expect to find in a high-end Wiesmann boiler. Now, just in front of our high efficiency pump, we've got this terminal block here. So there's eight terminals on this. It's split up into four sections. So you've got one, two, three, and four. Now, um, the section number two is where you want your domestic hot water sensor. So that's terminal block three and four, as you're looking at it from left to right. Now, I've had it in the past where Wiesmann have actually put this in upside down, so it can get a little bit confusing. So if you get any errors come up, don't worry, it's probably not your fault. It's probably they just wired this terminal block back to front. Um, last time I had that, I run up, rung up Wiesmann. They explained they had a few come out like that from the factory, so I'm assuming that will be addressed now. So other than that, that's pretty much all you need to do to get this boiler wired in. It comes with a three core cable, which obviously you should put into a fuse spur. This one's actually going onto a plug top at the moment. That uh, plug top there just needs to get changed for a fuse spur. And then once that's done, turn the power on and then it will go into commissioning mode. Once you're in commissioning mode, you can either run the commissioning through the controls, which to be honest, I find a little bit not complicated but it's not as straightforward as connecting it up to the app so you can actually connect this straight to the vi guide app do all your commissioning that way and in those settings you can kind of like set all the parameters so your flow temperatures you can add your veto troll stat which i'll show you in a minute so pretty much in terms of wiring for a four pipe system that is literally all i need to do for this because the stats wireless and the only cable going in and out of the boiler is the sensor going up to the domestic hot water cylinder and then just our live neutral earth. So what I'll do is I'll take you inside whilst I'm getting this all flushed out and I'll show you the Vito Troll thermostat. I'm up in the airing cupboard now and this is the hot water cylinder. It's a vented cylinder so it's quite unusual to be honest to be piped up to a four pipe system. I've never ever seen it like this before. Usually I only see them on unvented cylinders but this is our temperature sensor here so it's just a file that's connected to a two core cable. That's the cable that runs all the way back to the boiler and that's touching the uh, copper of the hot water cylinder and giving us our domestic hot water temperature. This is the wireless thermostat that we've got connected directly to the boiler. So there's no additional receiver unit. This just connects straight to the boiler, which is obviously great. There's no additional wiring. Um, this isn't the most user friendly stat though, I would say. It is quite complicated. It would be better if Eastman brought out something that was a bit better um, for the customers to use because it is overly complicated. But what it does do is measures the internal temperature like any other room stat but it also enables you to then connect your phone to the app so you can control the boiler. This is measuring the inside temperature. It's a load compensation room stat, so you can't actually use this with weather compensation as well. So really you need to use one or the other. If you were going weather compensation, you'd probably use the Wiesmann 200 boiler, I would suggest, but this is pretty good for measuring the inside temperature. Obviously, if you change the settings on this, it's gonna alter the settings on the app and vice versa so again it is quite slick looking but in terms of using it it just doesn't look that modern does it <laughs> on the display it's not color or anything like that but in typical Wiesmann fashion uh it's complicated to use